Hey guys, so today I'm gonna talk to you guys about something a little different. Okay, this is uncharted territory. I feel like I've never really talked about anything public health related before, but I think this is something that you guys deserve to know and I'm very excited to share because I have a seasoned professional. Her name is Dr. Eda and she'll be able to like answer some of the most common questions and assumptions and honestly I've been learning a lot from her so we're gonna get into that later but I just want to give you guys a brief background, I guess like an explanation on like what HPV is because I didn't even know that was a thing until two years ago. Alright, so human papillomavirus, HPV, is a viral infection that's passed between people through skin-to-skin -skin contact. So there are over a hundred varieties of HPV, 40 of which can be passed through sexual contact and can affect like your genitals, your throat and your mouth. HPV is also the most common like STI, sexually transmitted infection, and it's a different virus from HIV or HSV, which is like herpes. And like I said, because there's so many different types, right? Some of them are like not so problematic, they're fine, and then some of them are like not as fine. So the vaccines will actually help protect against like several different types and like strains and varieties of HPV, including the ones that cause cervical cancer. And this actually information passed to me by my med school friend. I don't know if it's like still accurate, but she said that cervical cancer is like the eighth leading cause of death either in Singapore or like amongst women in Singapore and she said that she was really frustrated because in Australia where she's studying like cervical cancer it's not really like a concern because um, a lot of them in schools have HPV vaccine and so like she said that you know because this is like largely preventable more people should know about it. This whole conversation happened because one I was getting my vaccination but two because there was an article about how like secondary school girls now do get the HPV vaccination in school and some like parents were kind of pissed off about it and they wanted to opt out and they were complaining and saying that like this HPV vaccination would cause their kids to be more sexually active. Yeah it's just like a very like silly assumption to make and something that I feel like needs to be talked about lah. So when I was actually studying in the US like I was under health insurance and then when I went to the school clinic they asked me if I've gotten vaccinated for HPV and then I was like what is that and then they kind of told me about it and I think they were kind of surprised that I didn't know and I was like oh my god so I was like oh okay like since it's covered by insurance and you know like it prevents this prevents that like okay sounds good let's do it that's how me and my friend like had that conversation this ties into like our sexual health and our wellness and this is one of the cancers that we can help prevent so I think it's like quite important that all of us at least know what it does and give ourselves the choice of whether we want to get vaccinated or not. So I got my last like shot, you know, to finish the vaccination over a year ago. It was super fast free. I just got it done at like a polyclinic. I'm pretty sure you can go to like any one of your healthcare providers and they can like basically hook you up with what you need to know and you know how to get things done and I'm gonna recommend like maybe to do the same as well and I do recommend you guys to you know check with your healthcare provider if you've already gotten the vaccination who knows that like, you may have gotten it done um, and just to like find out more about it and help yourself prevent cervical cancer. I think it's like a huge deal. So knowing that I had a lot of questions and I know that you guys had a lot of questions too because I asked you guys on my Instagram stories if you have any questions and you know what? As passionate as I am about this topic, like I'm not an expert. So I did get the hookup with Dr. Ida. She is a gynecologist and she is a licensed professional, an expert that will be able to give us like the answers that we need. So we're gonna hang out with her now. All right, so now we're joined with Dr. Ida. Dr. Ida, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Ida Ismail Pratt. I am a gynecologist. That means I deliver babies and I am in charge of all the care for women, especially in uh, gynae cancer screening and prevention. Awesome. So today we're going to ask Dr. Ida some questions, fears and assumptions um, about HPV. And I've also thrown in some of my own, so I'm pretty excited to begin. So, okay. With the efficacy of the HPV vaccine um, and screenings, will they still work if I take it after I'm already sexually active? Well, uh, certainly the HPV vaccine, we know the best time to get it is before you're ever sexually active. And the reason is because before you're exposed to the virus at all, then uh, your immune 
immune system can actually build up the protection, uh, a good protection against future exposure. But then we know that young women, okay, like um, yourself, not me, but yourself, okay, <laughs> um, we know that we are always exposed to the virus. So even if you're sexually active, yes, you have the potential that you may have been exposed to the virus before, but there are about 14 types of HPV that's actually um, cancer related. Most of the time, you're not going to be exposed to all of them, but the one that you've not been exposed to, you can still get protection. So if you're young, especially in your 20s, in your teens, even if you are already sexually active, it is actually really recommended that you take the HPV vaccine. When is the best time to get vaccinated then? The younger actually, the better, just because the immune system, the response to the vaccine is better. The HPV jabs have been become uh, free for secondary school students now, right? So uh, just wondering if they are aware of their choices. Uh, the school HPV vaccination program, uh, the government launched it last year, which is great. That's a really, really big step preventing you from getting cervical cancer in future. I mean, certainly that there are choices and uh, the government is actually pretty clear in terms of the choices of uh, cancer prevention that is available and what is actually given in the school. But if you're not sure about your choice, you need to uh, just ask your doctor, basically. Your doctor will be available. It will be available. Your doctor is all Always available but your, your doctor will be able to actually um, advise you on your choices in terms of your cervical cancer prevention. What should I ask my doctor before I get vaccinated and prior to screening? The first thing when you see your doctor you have to obviously tell your doctor that uh, I'm interested to go for screening and also I would like to know more about um, cervical cancer prevention. Also find out from your doctor if I go for screening at my age, okay, how often should I go for screening? Remember when you're 25 to 29, the current guideline is actually every three years. Uh, if you're 30 years to 69, it's every five years. And also the screening is actually a, a, a different type of screening. So a lot of women asked as well, whether it's uncomfortable or it's painful because screening involves an internal examination. So uh, majority of the time, it's just, it might be slightly uncomfortable. It shouldn't be painful at all. It doesn't last long. It's less than, less than five minutes to do it. In terms of um, cervical cancer prevention, then you can ask your doctor, um, how do you prevent yourself from exposure to HPV in future? So those are some of the things that you can ask uh, your doctor. Okay, so how do I know if I have HPV and are there any other symptoms besides uh, the usual like genital warts? So the first thing is, Genital warts HPV do not cause cancer. It is very, very common. You can also prevent it if you want. The HPV that causes cancer is very different types from the genital warts. You will not know whether you have HPV or not unless you do your pap smear or your HPV test. It's totally asymptomatic. There's no symptoms at all. So that's why when you are, while well, you're already sexually active, right? And then um, you're 25 years and above, you know, your doctor will nag you, have you done your pap smear? Have you done your pap smear? And that's the reason because the infection is totally asymptomatic. And cervical cancer actually is also most of the time, no symptoms at all until it actually is in the late stage. And the good thing about you going to take the HPV and also if you go for screening is that we can totally prevent cervical cancer. It doesn't really need to happen if you do this. Yeah. Right. Wow. I didn't know that. That's so scary to have it like yeah, so yeah. Yeah, asymptomatic. Wow. All right. Is HPV a lifetime thing? Like let's say if I do get HPV. Not really a lifetime, lifetime, but HPV is a virus. It's very, very common. It's as common as the flu virus. So it's just like the flu virus. Actually, the good thing about any kind of viruses is like when you're young, especially, we are always exposed to it, but then our immune system will continuously getting rid of it. That's why having a healthy life, eating a healthy diet, then you make sure your immune system is good, is actually really important. So the same with HPV because we keep on getting exposed to it, but majority of the time, it's just an acute infection or a transient infection. So transient HPV don't really cause cancer because what we are actually concerned about is that if there's whatever reason, if you get exposed to HPV, and then you're not able to actually get rid of the infection and it stays in you like you know a long time and that's when it develops kind of like all the abnormal cells lie and then all the cervical cancer.
Yeah. Right. So can HPV be cured? So these different strains that are in your body? Yes. I mean, you're, when you have, when you're exposed to a HPV, your body is already engineered to actually get rid of the infection. And in a way, you get, and you get antibodies or like memory cells to make sure that if you get exposed again, it's going to fight it again. The natural immune system can only protect you to a certain level. And that's why the vaccine is really important because the vaccine actually, when you take it, it boosts up your natural immune system so that when you take the vaccine, it protects you at the moment. So it does gives you an added protection, a better protection against future exposure. Okay, thank you for that. That was very insightful. Uh, I hope you're ready, doctor, because we're moving into sex-related questions. Okay, so the first one is, how do you know if the HPV was contracted sexually or through non-genital means? Is it possible to have it contracted through non-sexual methods? Um, you won't know because uh, in terms of HPV, then it is transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact, including uh, sexual intercourse, okay? So, but other ways that you can actually get a contracted HPV infection is by using sex toys or even by um, other means of um, sexual um, activities such as oral sex or anal, anal sex. You can actually contract HPV by then as well. Does kissing or other forms of sexual activity spread HPV? Because it's skin-to-skin -skin contact, there is a potential that you will be exposed to HPV. But remember, HPV itself is not scary. HPV actually doesn't really do much apart from giving you abnormal screening results and also developing cancer in future. So that's why we, uh, we, we use the virus as, uh, for screening, basically, when mm. we do your smear. So uh, in terms of uh, dangerous uh, causing other things, there's not really not really anything that I can think of apart from cervical cancer, which is very, very, very dangerous if you get it. You don't want to get cervical cancer. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, next question, possibly off the record, but does sex between two women cause HPV? So in sex between two women, certainly you'll be exposed to HPV. However, if you do penetrative sexual activities, as I said, you, you need to actually uh, consider going for uh, uh, cervical screening still because there's still a potential that um, you may be exposed to the, to the virus. I see. Next question. Do I need to practice safe sex after I get the HPV vaccination and still go for regular screening? You always have to practice safe sex, honey. <laughs> okay. Whether you've had the HPV vaccine or you've not had the HPV vaccine. And yes, if you've had the, uh, um, the vaccination, you still have to go for your regular screening. All right. Last question related to sex. All right. If teens are vaccinated and screened, does this mean that they're more likely to engage in sexual activities? I think I know the answer to this, but nice to hear from a doctor. <laughs> Not at all, certainly not. And you know what? They've actually done a study on this in America mm -hmm. and they've actually asked uh, quite a few kind of like um, university students as well. And basically there's not really any correlation between having the vaccine and you actually engaging in early sexual intercourse. And because it's, the vaccine is, is not about sexual activity, the vaccine is about uh, cervical cancer prevention. And it's all about cervical cancer prevention. So I do have a question from uh, a viewer. She says, if I'm above 25 and a virgin, how often should I get a pap smear and will I still contract HPV? Okay, if you're 25 and you're still a virgin, you don't really need a pap smear, mm. okay? Because the screening or the pap smear actually is recommended for women who's already had or ever had sex before. And the reason is because when you're a virgin, your, uh, the exposure to the virus is so little that your risk of cervical cancer is actually very, very, very low. Screening is not really going to be beneficial. But the vaccine, yes, because you are also categorized as somebody that has ve uh, still very little exposure to the HPV uh, virus. So that's why the vaccine will work for you really pretty well, actually. So yeah, you need to get the vaccine. So someone else asks, how do I bring up HPV prevention up to my parents? What do I say? I think this is something that a lot of people worry about. Yeah, I know. So basically, there's a misconception about HPV vaccine. And if you've had the 
vaccine that you are thinking about having sex or you know being sexually active mm. it's nothing to do with sexual activity hpv vaccine is all about cervical cancer prevention so when you tell your parents you say what, what i usually say is that you know um, I, my advice is that um, when you want the hpv vaccine just it's a cervical cancer vaccine so you can tell your parents that you know i don't want to get cervical cancer in future there is this vaccine that is designed actually to prevent me actually even from getting uh, the the cell that has the potential to become cancer okay this is primary prevention screening is actually when you go for screening like your mom that goes for screening every five years every three years that's basically damage control because they're too old to get the vaccine we're already infected by the virus exposed to the virus and what we're doing with screening is that we're trying to stop the progression of the infection to become cancer that's how your pap smear and your hpv test save your life because we can catch those cells before they become cancer treat it you still don't get cervical cancer but you guys the young ones are luckier because you guys have the vaccine that prevent you from getting the infection in the first place mm -hmm. okay you see so so that's why you just tell your parents this is a vaccine for cervical cancer prevention i want this vaccine because i don't want cervical cancer one less cancer for you to think about okay yeah 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 because other cancers um other cancers like breast cancer yes we go for screening but we can't usually catch it in the what you call the pre-cancer stage they mm. have to change to cancer first and then your doctor will try and catch it in stage one right. but survival cancer if, if you had your vaccine you go for your regular screening not even going to get anywhere near there moving on to questions about men so i know that hpv is uh focused on like women's health and cervical cancer but can men seek hpv prevention as well Yes, they can actually. They can actually go see their doctor and um, request for information and also on HPV-related uh, cancer prevention from them um, because we know that uh, the uh, HPV, the cancer-related HPV has been associated with anal cancer and, and anal pre-cancer in men as well. Uh, so can men actually be tested positive for like HPV related diseases? Someone said that they know a guy who's had partners with it, but he believed that he didn't have it or that, you know, it couldn't possibly get, you know, passed on to him. Well, unfortunately for men, there's not really any effective screening tool to screen for the um, HPV related diseases. Because when you're talking about checking HPV for HPV related cancer, it's basically to prevent them from getting the cancer. And the good thing is, is that we women are lucky because the, the screening tool for cervical cancer is very effective and is a sensitive tool. And it does, it has been shown to reduce our chance of getting cervical cancer. There's no such tool uh, for screening for HPV related disease in men at all. And that's why HPV cancer, uh, HPV cancer prevention is actually really important. It's something we actually need to, to make bo both men and women be aware of. All right, doctor, last question. So is it safe right now in this like current COVID situation to get the HPV vaccine or to go for screenings? If you're thinking about uh, getting the HPV vaccine or you're thinking to go for screening or you do one, please go see your doctor. But certainly in the COVID situation, you, uh, you just still have to uh, continue to follow the, the current measures, wear your mask, hand wash, make sure you're show social distancing, and then, and then yeah, it should be, it should be fine. Okay. Great. I think those are all of the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much, Dr. Ida, for hanging out with me and answering all of my that questions. Fun. Yeah. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right, so that was my conversation with Dr. Ida. I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope she answered your questions. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I will try and like see if there's any way that she can respond to them. And you know, I would love to start this conversation. Keep at it. Like, you know, talk to your friends about it. The one time that I got vaccinated, I spoke to at least like 10 people about it online and then offline like a few more of my friends so i think it's quite important lah you know there's such a short window for us to get vaccinated against like one of the easily most like preventable cancers out there so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it's a little different but you know what 
what? I think this is something important enough for all of us to like take some time out to talk about. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend who needs to know this info, leave a comment down below if you have any other questions, and don't forget to subscribe for more. And I don't know about public health. If you want me to, why not? Let's do it. And don't forget to also click the bell to turn on your notifications, and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye. No, no, you want to say bye bye? He's he's such a child. Look at him. Mastery Noodle with Jagan Ties. Oh my god, stop sniffing your crotch. Alright, he's like super bored. So I'll see you guys. I'm gonna walk him now. Bye bye.